Uh, Mike Cahill with uh, Star CNC Machine Tool Corp. Uh, we, I'm the regional manager for Ohio and the surrounding states. Um, welcome to the booth. And what we're going to be demonstrating today is our newest uh, member to uh, the Star family, being the SX38. Um, Star is a Swiss, uh, Swiss machine tool builder. Uh, we're one of the top ones as far as rigidity and accuracy uh, and capability. Uh, one of the things that we really look for in this machine is some of the complications or some of the challenges we have in this uh, um, inside our industry today, which is uh, the harder materials. I'm sure we all make everything out of brass, right? No, we have a lot of harder materials now. Uh, a lot of the parts are getting bigger now. You know, we got a lot of, uh, uh, so as far as having the small seven millimeter machines anymore are kind of non-existent. So we kind of want to broaden our industry to a bigger uh, 38 millimeters. Uh, 32 used to be the max before, but now we're getting even bigger than that, you know? Um, so obviously, you know, we're America, so bigger is more, right? Right? So anyways, it was 38 millimeters. So that's the uh, machining uh, diameter bar capacity of the machine uh, being an inch and a half. Uh, all of our machines, all our new machines are a, what we call convertible. So it can be ran with or without a guide bushing. All right. Uh, without a guide bushing, we're actually able to go up to 42 millimeter. So inch and five eighths. So the only restriction is you got to be within two and a half times that diameter and your length of your part. Okay. So obviously your headstock stroke is going to go from about a little over uh, 12 and a half inches down to about a little over three and three quarter inches. Okay. Um, so moving on to that. One thing that really uh, points out this machine is the actual size of the machine. Uh, Star is very good at building a very robust, rigid machine. Strong castings, a strong base, especially when you're starting to machine a lot of these harder materials, you have a lot of harmonics and everything you need to be able to absorb, okay? Um, machine access, besides uh, the machine itself, it's about 13,000 pounds, okay? Uh, another thing we really, once you get up into bigger Swiss sizes, you always got to think about your bar because you're spinning an inch and a half bar stock at 7,000 RPM or less. And you really need to pay attention to your bar feeder. You need to really have a nice, robust, rigid bar feeder to be able to absorb all that vibration because any of those high vi hydraulic vibrations are definitely going to show up on your part. Okay. Uh, we actually uh, do a lot of these FMB 555s because the actual overall weight of the machine itself you got about 6,700 uh, 6, pounds of a bar feeder being able to support your bar as it's spinning, okay? One of the things Star did do is make our access doors as user-friendly as possible. So both your headstock room and your work room has a nice wide um, opening for easy access. Um, one of the biggest things I want to point out in this machine is a slant bed, which helps out with not only chip flow, access to the tools, but also safe access. Okay, I'm not reaching across all my back working tools to change tools. So, you got it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so anyways, that, so they kept that in mind too as well, so you're not reaching across a bunch of tools to cut yourself. So with the Fanuc controller, the Fanuc 31i, three path kind of control because this is a three, a three path machine. They have three tools in the cut at the same time. So we want to optimize any kind of process that we put onto this machine. Okay. First of all, we're starting with the 12, 12.6 inch of stroke. Again, that doesn't limit you to how long the part you're going to have. Typically with a swish, you can grab that bar as many times as you want. You can make up to a six foot part if you want. Okay. Uh, if you notice that the front of the spindle here does have a ground surface, that's what's accommodating to be able to switch from a to be able to switch from a, a bushing to a not, no bushing. So what you're basically going to do is take your bushing out, and that ground surface is going to take up that area in the casting with the ceiling ring. All right. From there, we're going to move on to the workroom. And again, I want to point out a lot of the benefits of this machine is not only the size, the rigidness, but how many tools you can fit in the machine. So we have a lot of uh, uh, customers that run millions of parts or they run low quantities of parts. So the biggest thing with having a machine that has the capability of holding a type of uh, many, as many tools in this uh, machine is able to machine, uh, put standardized tooling in it uh, to be able to reduce setup time. We have a 10 station tur uh, turret, gang slide, 
and back working, okay? The 10 station turret is a quarter turn. That's what the difference between a type A and a type B is. We're demonstrating a type A, which is gonna have the quarter turn quick release to get the holders in and out, to be able to preset them offline and put them back in the machine. Each station with certain holders, depending on your process, can hold up to six tools per station. Okay, so that really opens up a door. There's a lot of ID tools. Uh, we can get up to uh, two spindles of cross milling, two spindles of face milling, counterface if needed, uh, but there's a lot of opportunities down here. Uh, this turret not only moves up and down, uh, it adjusts the center, but it also moves away in the Z3 axis to be able to work on a sub spindle at the same time as well. Okay, so that's a multi-function. Bottom turret was a huge tool inside this, uh, inside this machine. Our path one is gonna be our gang slide up here. Again, chip flow is what we're focusing on. All right, and then here we have the bigger turning tools, four positions, and we also have a B axis on the top. Okay, it's a built-in B axis from zero to 135 degrees. It's gonna be four spindles, ER20 on the front, and on the back side of that B axis arm is four spindles at ER16. So you got half inch capacity on the front, three inch capacity on the back. That you'll see as we run through this part, you'll see the B axis at work. It's full programmable, okay? Um, so being able to put standardized tooling in there to be able to flip from cross milling to face milling, uh, it's not a problem, it's just everything that's inside the, pro inside the program itself. Uh, to go back to turret, our type B, turret the difference between the type a and type b is the mounting okay right now we have uh and, and also the drive system uh with the type b it's an actual bolt-on type holder okay with a direct drive drive uh, so basically what it is is uh, whatever live tool is in that position to work that's the only tool that's turning okay all right and once once we start the machine you'll be able to see a lot of stuff at work um Lastly, I want to point out our back working. It's an A position. All eight positions are capable of live tool. All eight of them are face live tool uh, compatible. The top four are cross milling compatible as well. Okay, so that opens up a lot of opportunities to put in uh, many different tools, many different tooling options uh, as far as live tool, static tools, and be able to operate from many different angles. So your sub spindle has two tool posts to work with as well as your front. With that being said, the front two tool posts being independent of each other, they can have two total different machine paths. Let's say, okay, so when you do pinch turn, balance turn, pinch mill, everything can be done within those two slides because they're independent of each other, all right? You can be milling one path up here and milling a completely other path on the bottom called super positioning, okay? This Z3 axis here is always gonna keep track of where your Z1 axis is. Okay, so wait, the main focus on this machine is to get as many tools in the cut at the same time. There's much work done back here independently because that's where your time saving is. Okay, and uh, get as many tools uh, uh, done in the front side as possible so you can reduce your cycle time by having two, two tools in the cut at the side, same time. All right. And Dave, if you want to start the machine. I'll have him run it and I'll kind of explain the process. A lot of things when you're talking about two tools coming in on, uh, and a cut at the same time, you're also talking a lot about balance milling, balance turning. Like in this particular part, uh, one of the parts we're making, we're taking two M mills and actually making a corkscrew out of it. If you only do it with one mill, you're going to see a lot of tool deflection. All right, we do two mills, you just evened out that pressure. So all you're doing is just feeding it right in between two mills. So that's when you got to start thinking that's when I can have two tools at the cut at the same time. While the machine's running, we see it up here. On this particular process, we're actually demonstrating pinch turning. And that's what we're doing right now. It's a little smoky. <laughs> but your gang slide's coming in from the top. It's hard to see. Uh, your turret's in the bottom, and you got both tools in the cut at the same time pinch turning. One thing that's nice about your bottom axis there, your Z3 axis, is uh, you're able to adjust how much your rougher is taken off versus your finisher, okay? And 
And of course, we don't have it. We had about 25% of our uh, rapids right now. So the main function of this, you'll see the B-axis moving over there right now. So you see the full from zero to 135 degree uh, B-axis work. So our main focus and demonstration on this machine, and feel free to come up here after the video is over or after this demonstration is over, uh, feel free to come in and see how we can uh, incorporate as many tools as possible within the process to reduce cycle time, uh, the horsepower of the machine, when we're talking 15 horsepower in the main, 15 horsepower in the sub, so we have the power to take on those hard to machine materials and also on the live tools. So any questions?